What is postmodern conservatism? Postmodern conservatism is the kind of reactionary politics that one would expect to see in the conditions of postmodernity in neoliberal societies. Um, one of the things that's important to note here is that the way that I understand postmodernism isn't the way that one conventionally interprets it uh, if one just listens to the kind of colloquial discourse on it. Uh, so a lot of people see postmodernism as purely a theory uh, that was mainly espoused by various French philosophers in the 1960s through the 1990s and uh, it's become very popular amongst left-wing activists today. Uh, my interpretation draws a lot more figures like Mark Fisher or David Harvey who see it as a cultural condition that's emerged and that we all inhabit. Given that it's a cultural condition that we're all immersed in, one should expect that it would impact not just left-wing variants of politics, but also right-wing variants of politics. Uh, and my book tries to explore how it is that the political right has adapted to that condition. So what postmodernism is uh, tends to depend upon the author uh, or the figures that you're referring to. So some people interpret postmodernism, as I said, uh, as a theoretical position, usually one that's associated with a novel variant of epistemic skepticism, which just means skepticism uh, about how the world is. Uh, people who understand postmodernism as a theory tend to be really critical of it since they see it as undermining faith in traditional values uh, or grand meta-narratives uh, or the certainty of a science and the enlightenment, all the kind of boogie bears uh, that we hear about in the popular discourse. Those who interpret postmodernism as a condition uh, agree that there's an association between postmodernity and skepticism, uh, but they're not necessarily arguing for this from a theoretical perspective. They say that the reason people are skeptical today is because we inhabit a unique culture where people just don't really have faith uh, in meta narratives of any sort the way that they used to. Uh, and many people who understand postmodernism as a condition in this way see this as a very bad thing, uh, including myself in some respects. The difference between left-wing postmodern uh, activism and right-wing postmodern activism is left-wing postmodern activists tend to invoke epistemic skepticism as a way to make room for political and moral pluralism. Uh, so they're very critical of universalistic meta-narratives that seem to exclude many different voices from the political table. Uh, you can think about meta-narratives, uh, about how it's natural to belong uh, to one gender or another, uh, or meta-narratives about how it is that sexual relations need to be understood this way because the Christian God has dictated this, uh, or meta-narratives about universalism of a particular form uh, of liberal individualism. Left-wing postmodernists push against this and say we need to include the voices of those who dissent uh, from these narratives. Right-wing postmodernists don't adopt the same standpoint. Right-wing postmodernists feel that epistemic skepticism should be invoked, uh, but only if the narrative uh, or the idea that they're pushing against seems to have a corrosive impact on traditions and forms of authority that they happen to cherish. Uh, so their skepticism is much more strategic, um, and it's invoked in order to counteract individuals and antagonists that they feel are problematic for the maintenance of their worldview. I would say the perfect example of a postmodern conservative is the, in the conventional sense of the word uh, is somebody like Donald Trump. Um, and the reason is that Donald Trump embodies not just a dishonest approach to the truth uh, or a skeptical approach to the truth uh, in the classical sense of the word. He's truly indifferent to the idea of truth uh, in the sense that any normal person would understand it. He just doesn't think it's all that important. Uh, the way that Donald Trump understands the world uh, is it's determined by what his interests are at any given point. Uh, and if he encounters facts or epistemic authorities that happen to counteract what he, want, what he wants, 
Well, then he'll just invoke skeptical narratives or conspiracy theorizing to try to undermine them. Uh, but his skepticism is obviously not consistent, right? Uh, when it comes to values or ideas uh, or facts that are convenient for the propagation of his particular worldview, his strategic skepticism is very quickly abandoned uh, and he'll in fact invoke a very rigidly dogmatic uh, approach to the world. Well, what inspired me to come up with the concept of postmodern conservatism was a Brexit referendum in the UK uh, and the US election in 2016. Like a lot of people, I did not expect um, Brexit to be pushed through, and I didn't expect Trump to win, uh, even though I thought it was possible. And I was shocked by these events and galvanized into action, as it were. And this really encouraged me to look more deeply into the history of conservative thought to try to better understand what it was exactly that was going on. So starting in 2017, I began to crack open my copies uh, of conservative classics like Edmund Burke's The Reflections on Revolutions in France uh, or the works of Joseph de Maistre. And what I realized is the epistemic skepticism, um, strategic epistemic skepticism specifically, that a lot of conservatives invoked uh, in order to maintain their support for traditionalism and certain forms of authority, actually wasn't all that novel. Uh, there have been conservative figures who had done this for a long time, uh, particularly via the critique of Enlightenment reason and Enlightenment rationalism uh, that got kickstarted all the way back to the 18th century. Uh, and this gave me the clue, as it were, to how it is that postmodern conservatism had emerged. It shared a genealogy with these older forms of conservatism, uh, but was also distinguished by the kind of hyper-real approach to the world uh, that many figures took, uh, the various different media that were evoked, uh, and also the approach to identity that was distinctively postmodern, even if it drew inspiration from earlier conservative approaches to identity. So when you're talking about the philosophers that inspired me to come up with this concept, there were quite a few of them. Uh, so on the constructive side, uh, I was really deeply inspired by David Harvey, Mark Fisher, uh, Frederick Jameson, uh, and their analyses of the condition of postmodernity. Uh, I was also encouraged by uh, some conservative theorists uh, who talk about postmodernity, not necessarily under those terms, of course, uh, but I think a lot of the insights are the same. Uh, figures like Patrick Deneen, for example, uh, his book Why Liberalism Failed was a big influence uh, on my own work. Uh, on the more critical side of things, again, I spent a lot of time going through right-wing literature to try to understand the genealogy of postmodern conservatism. Um, and I looked at figures like Evan Burke, Joseph de Maistre, Robert Bork, uh, Michael Oakeshott uh, was a big influence, Carl Schmitt, uh, and a whole array uh, of other peepers, people who are uh, canonically associated with the political right. Uh, and one of the things that I do want to say about that uh, is, like Coy Robin uh, in his book The Reactionary Mind, uh, what progressives need to understand when they're looking at these figures is it can be very tempting to just dismiss conservative viewpoints uh, as ignorant or based on prejudice, and oftentimes that can be the case. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there aren't intelligent people on the political right who are able to support their views in a way that can seem eminently plausible. Uh, so. One of the motivations for doing this was also to try to get a better understanding of the people that I opposed uh, in order to counteract their narratives and their viewpoints more effectively. <laughs>